welcome to rk tutorials solutions to engineering mechanics by timoshenko dh yang jv rao sukumar party in this tutorial we will discuss problem set 2.3 problem number 2.29 a pulley a is supported by two rods ab and ac which are hinged at points b and c to a vertical mast e f as shown in the figure now look at this there is a pulley here and this pulley is connected with two rods ab and ac and these two other ends of the rods ab and ac is connected to a vertical member e f over this pulley hangs a flexible cable dg now look at this dg is a cable which is passes over the pulley which is fastened to the mast d one end is connected to the vertical member d and carries the other end g a load 20 kilo newtons so at the other end of the cable a 20 kilo newtons q is attached neglecting friction in the pulley determine forces produced in the bars ab and ac the angles between the various members are shown in the figure that means two rods ab and ac and a string dg is passes over the pulley one end is fixed to the vertical member and another end a load is attached here our interest is to find the forces that are developed towards AB and AC. Now, if any system consisting of the strings, the force is along the string and it is away from the support. Here, the system consisting of the string DG and also the rods AB and AC. Let us assume that the two rods AB and AC are in tensile initially. At the end, if you get positive answer, then the tensile values are correct. But if you get negative value, that means these rods are in compression. With this concept, let us go to the solution of this problem. First of all, let us discuss what are the various forces that are developed in the system. Of course, the first force is the weight Q that acts always downwards. In fact, all these forces will develop exactly at the center of the pulley. But to understand, just I have drawn along the, along the rods or the strings. The first force is acts vertically downwards, that is Q. Next, the force in the rod AC, it is away from point A. Why, why I consider this is away from point A? Because initially, I am assuming that the force in the rod AC is a tensile. So, it is away from point A. Let the magnitude of that force is S2. Similarly, the force in the string, it is in tensile, so the force is away from point A, let the magnitude is S. And the force in the rod AB, it is along AB and it is away from point A, let the magnitude is S1. Because we are assuming that the Force in the rod AB is tensile, hence it is away from point A. The one important point here to solve this is, look at this, the string DG is entire thing is only one string. That means force along the string DG must be constant. Here the force is Q. And here the force is S. That means these two must be equal or you can say S is equal to Q. Now let us transfer all these forces onto an separate XY plane so that we can analyze this problem quickly. 
first i am transferring the force q that is the self weight the magnitude is 20 kilo newtons next the force in the rod ac that is s2 and away from point a now the force in s which is nothing but q i am transferring that force to the xy plane why this s is equal to q how you can say now dg is a flexible cable hence the load developed here must be equal to the q here next one is the force s1 that is force along a let us try to find the angles of these forces now clearly we can see here the angle between s and s2 is given as 30 degrees so i can take that value as it is you can see here the rod ac makes an angle 30 degrees with the vertical it is given as 30 degrees hence the s2 makes an angle 30 degrees with the vertical similarly the rod ab makes an angle 60 degrees with the vertical this is the given in the problem hence s1 makes an angle 60 degrees with the vertical this is a system consisting of four forces i cannot apply the sign rule as the system is having four forces so I am solving this problem using the concept of method of resolution. I have prepared a separate video on the concept of resolution of a force. Please watch it from RK Tutorials. Now Q is a vertical force, acts in the downward direction. So you need not to resolve that force I will take as it is. Next, let us resolve the force S2. S2 makes an angle. Now let us resolve the force S1. S1 makes an angle 60 degrees with the vertical. Hence, you can resolve this force into vertical component and horizontal component like this. The magnitude of the vertical component is S1 cos 60 and the other horizontal component is the sine component because S1 makes 60 degrees with the horizontal. Hence, the magnitude of the vertical force is S1 cos 60 and the horizontal is S1 sin 60. Now, Q makes an angle of 60 degrees with the vertical. Can resolve Q like this. One is like this, another one is like this. So, this vertical component becomes cos 60, horizontal component becomes sin 60. Let me draw on my xy plane. So, this vertical component becomes q cos 60 and the horizontal component becomes q sin 60. Similarly, S2 makes an angle 30 degrees with the vertical. So, you can resolve this force horizontal component like this and vertical component is like this and this vertical component is the cos component and the horizontal component becomes the sin component. Now, the vertical component of S2 that is S2 cos 30 and the horizontal component of S2 that is S2 sin 30. I have resolved all these forces along x and y axis. Now, I can apply my equilibrium equation sigma fx is equal to 0. All three forces acting along x axis towards left side so i will consider this direction is my positive x axis hence i can write yes s1 sin 60 q sin 60 plus s2 sin 30 is equal to 0 now i can simplify where sin 60 is equal to 0.866 so i can become it becomes s1 0.866 and Q is 20. So, 20 into 0.866 plus S2 into sin 30 is 0.5 and after simplifying this, I will get 
S1 into 0.866 and it is become 17.32 plus S2 into 0.5 is equal to 0 or 0.866 S1 plus 0.5 S2 is equal to minus 17.32. Let us consider this is equation number 1. Similarly, consider the next equilibrium equation sigma f y is equal to 0. Now here, one force is acting in the upward direction, three forces are acting in the downward direction. So I will consider my vertical direction is positive. Hence, S1 cos 60 minus Q cos 60 minus S2 sin 30 minus Q is equal to 0. Now, after simplifying, you will get S1 into 0.5 minus 20 into 0.5 minus S2 into 0.866 minus 20 is equal to 0. So, this you can further simplify. And finally, you will get 0.5 into S1 minus 0.866 into S2 is equal to 30. This is equation number 2. Now, let us solve these two equations. Now, how I can solve these two equations? Now, first I am multiplying equation 1 with 0.5 and the second equation I am multiplying with 0.866 so that the coefficients of S1 I am make it equal. So, it becomes 0 0.433 into S1 plus 0 0.25 into S2 is equal to minus 8.66. Similarly, if you multiply second equation with 0 0.866, then I will get 0.433 into S1 minus 0.75 S2 is equal to 25.98. Now we can simplify this. Then these two gets cancelled after subtracting. Then you will get S2. It becomes plus. It becomes minus. S2 is equal to minus 34.64 kilonewtons. This is the answer. Now once if you substitute this S2 back into equation 1, then I will get 0.866 into S1 plus 0.5 into minus 34.64 because my S2 value is minus 34.64 is equal to minus 17.32 and you can further simplify this and you will get S1 is equal to 0. So what is the meaning here? There is no force will develop in S1 and a force develop in S2 that is that to it is negative means S2 force is compressive. Let us go back to our problem now. That means here the force developed S1 is equal to 0 but S2 I am getting negative so this value is in compression and this value is minus 34.64. So the answers are S1 is equal to 0 and S2 is equal to 34.64 which is compressive. These two are the answers for the given problem.